my lovely wife, uh, Mother Dolores Chapman. We are here uh, this morning to uh, uh, just address some of the things that's going on in, in the country and in the world right now. We just felt that it was a, we would take a little bit different format than what we have in the past. Because in, in my mind, um, the church is, is going to have to start to strategize how we're going to deal with not only the current uh, situation of uh, the, uh, the pandemic and the George Floyd uh, things, but also how we're going to uh, move forward in the post-pandemic and in the post-George uh, Floyd uh, situations that are going on that are prevalent in everybody's mind. So we thought we would take a moment this morning to just really kind of talk about those issues and how it's going to affect the church. I don't really think initially the church is going to be able to go back to business as normal, business as usual, because um, we're going to be entering into a different world, into a kind of a little bit different age. Frederick Douglass actually had a quote many years ago that said, it is not a light that we need, but fire. It is not a gentle shower, but the thunder. We need the storm, we need the whirlwind, we need an earthquake. And those things have happened. We've had an earthquake. We've had something to actually shake the foundation of how we operate and how we move. And, and I really think that um, God in, in his infinite wisdom and, and who, being who he is, the Almighty, has really placed the church into a position where we need to, we have to reevaluate or we were actually fulfilling the commission that Christ left us here for because he actually asked and told us that we needed to occupy in this space until he came. So uh, I'm going to let, have, take a minute and let uh, Mother Chapman um, have some words and also introduce uh, herself a little bit further at this time. Good morning. I am so glad that you tuned in this morning and um, I pray that God has blessed you with health and wisdom and is the supplier of your needs. And if he's not, then we want to introduce you to him to uh, get an opportunity to know him and have a relationship with him. Uh, yes, uh, Pastor has uh, introduced and he has spoken briefly uh, about the things that we're facing in this world. At right now, there's so much going on, but God is still on the throne. Nothing has changed with him in heaven. God still loves us. It's how we're going to operate in the midst of all of this. I thank God for his goodness because when um, the pandemic hit, the Lord had given me three things to keep in my spirit. And the first thing was he told us to, told me was not to be fearful, to stay strong. The, the second thing he told me was uh, don't be afraid. That's the first. The second one is to be strong Put on some strength and the third thing was he told uh, me was to that I had to learn how to love and embrace even more so I thank God for his goodness and I thank him for his mercy um, I could hear the Spirit of the Lord telling me in my spirit don't walk in the flesh because the flesh reacts to everything but when we consecrate ourselves and put ourselves in the will of God and walk in the Spirit of God then God has to our access weapons that we can use. And I'm not talking about corner weapons like the gun and the knife and, and all those things, but our weapons are the Word of God, the blood of the Lamb, prayer and intercession, and uh, fasting and prayer, and uh, the gifts. When we begin to fast and pray and seek God, God releases the gifts even more in our lives, and He also released the fruits of the Spirit even more. So, so we thank God. Uh, for just this, this once again for this opportunity, Mother Chapman is like I said, she's a word person. Thank God for uh, the things. And, and uh, right now, I would like to make just some some soul points about how uh, we're going to try to move into some of the things that we are going to try to be a little bit more active in. Um, for the most part, I am not political. I I I, I have my opinions about things, but I, I try not to express that in in this in the religious environment. Um, but in this, in this moving forward, I think it's very important that, that we as, as an entity uh, get a little bit more involved in some of the things that's involved around politics. One is voter registration. We, we have to vote. We have to do the things necessary that our people can uh, have a, a little bit more impact up on the things that are going on around us. Uh, so we will be involved in voter registration, make sure everybody we know and the people around us are registered to vote. And... Uh, 
understanding that our, our ancestors, man, they paid such a great price for us to have the right to vote. And, and the, um, we cannot get discouraged. We cannot get, uh, allow ourselves to become even more disenfranchised because sometimes we get to that thing where why vote because it doesn't matter. Well, it mattered because a great price was paid, first of all. Our ancestors uh, understood the, the, the power of the vote, and yes. we have to reiterate that. We've got to yes. reinforce that to this generation and to a, a, even in my generation, that we have to exercise that right to vote. That's one of the only powers that we have yes. to create change. And when we uh, let ourselves become discouraged and don't get involved in that process, we actually help the, the system uh, hold you down. So we will be involved in, in, in voter registration in the near future so that in when November and as the elections coming up in the, in the near future, we're not telling you who to vote for, but you definitely need to vote and vote prayerfully. You know, we sometimes we say that there's not a good candidate. Well, we have to decide which candidate is better than the other. That's, but but we have to get involved. The other thing that we're going to be talking, uh, being a little bit more involved in, is community a activism. Uh, what's going on in our community? What's going on in the environment yes. around us? We have to be involved as the as the entity of, of moral standards and and the, as the entity of peace. Uh, so we we will be in, involved in the things that infect or affect our environment or our communities around us. We're the church. We're, we are the place in, the, in, the, in our ancestry that the, our, our world actually revolved around. When we were not allowed to involve the other things in society, the church is where we went to learn how to read, where we went to learn our educational processes. The church was the place where we had our social gatherings, and we've got to re-involve and become, yes. once again, the community church, and not just a place of, of minutes where People just come there, as, as my uh, um, deacon friend always said, for their uh, uh, excited fix-up. No, we've got to get involved in the things that's going on in, in our communities. And, and there's, a, there's a saying that said, uh, either you are a part of the problem or a part of the solution. And I, what I'm saying at this point, that we are going to have to make a conscious decision to become a part of the solution. The things that's going on in, in the world around us, they're not going to, uh, although there's great activism, there's great peace uh, marches and protests and, and yes. those things going on right now, yes. but that's those are short term. We've got to start to look at how can we peacefully affect long-term change. Uh, Bishop Blake on this week um, had a very beautiful message, and, he, and, his, and his part of the subject was that we cannot sit silent any longer. It is very important, man, that we that we stand up and 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 get involved in, in what's going on, and not in a in a in a violent way, but in a peaceful way. Amen. It is not enough to just stand behind the wooden and marble and glass podiums and pulpits to express what we think, and to, but we've got to somehow inspire change. And the way we're going to have to inspire that change is to reach out to those who are hurting. To, to, and to uh, how do we touch hurting humanity and to have a plan. We've got to sit down together as, 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 as entities, as churches, united to come up with what our short-term strategies are going to be and what the long-term strategies are going to be to create the change that we need to in our society today. James had a, a, a saying in the book of James that said, faith without works is dead. We can talk faith. But what are we going to do? How are we going to execute the things necessary to help our people evolve out of this situation? The things that are going on and that we're being affected by are, are not new. They have been uh, more exposed. But it is time for, for, for yeah. me and my mind, for the church to reevaluate how are we are going to minister, how we're going to go about the things we do in the post pandemic and post uh, George Floyd era. God has blessed the mind of Christ during this period. We, we do, a, a, the Lord's blessed people to reach out. We have a very beautiful feeding program going on and different things. We're also uh, involved in other churches and we're going to be trying to have means about how we can come together even more so. So I'm going to end with this uh, scripture. Um, it said, wherefore he said, awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead. Christ shall give thee light. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That's where I feel that the church, oh, we need to awake from how our processes are and come into a better understanding. And, say, and, and, and then say, and walk circumspectly, understanding that who we are, we are the body of Christ. We are the empowered people. Yes, God are. has left us here to create a church, a world, and to affect the world and to bring people to him. Christ is the answer. It is the church's job to, to get that word out. And not just in words, but in deeds. Jesus was a man of action. He has empowered his people to be people of action. Let us walk the way Christ walked. There's an expression that says, what would Jesus do? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Yes. In this era, what would Jesus do? Yes. How would he minister? Oh. How would he do the things necessary to make the constituents and his people better? Yes, he went to the cross. He paid the ultimate sacrifice. But before that time, he ministered to the needs of the people. And he did it with power. God bless you all. This is Pastor Darrell Chapman, Mother of the Lord's Chapman from the Mount of Christ Church. We love you. We ask that you would keep us in your prayers. And we will also keep you in our prayers. For prayer.